Hi guys, today I wanted to talk about how I make rhythm or whatever instrument you have with multiple ins and multiple outs the way I do it in Bitwig. The main obstacle to overcome in Bitwig is that we cannot do what is called a feedback loop. I cannot send MIDI and receive audio to the same track. So I cannot just do eight tracks or send MIDI and receive the audio. In Ableton, there is a method to do that via external instruments device. And in Reaper, it's very easy, for example, you just do the routing as you please. In Cubase, I think it's the same deal as in Bitwig, but I'm not sure I'm not a power Cubase user. Um, so my usual rhythm group is comprised usually of a drum engine. This drum engine will receive media inputs from all the channels, uh, the media channels within the groups. Why do we do that? That's my method of overcoming Bitwig's shortcomings. Every snare MIDI is accompanied by a drum machine, uh, which is deactivated just to get the namings down over here to the, to the drum when you fold it. Okay, so you can see the names of all the drums that you're working with. So that is very important to me. Today I will do an example of this using microtonic the reason i'm using microtonic is one it's very simple to use i think and two it's uh got only one channel per instrument and one midi note per instrument so it makes things a little easier for example my workhorse for drum sounds drum samples is tl drum at the moment it used to be guys too but it doesn't get any more updates so i moved over to tl drum which is really really great however there are four layers of everything and you can do layers within layers like inside every pad i can add more samples to the pad and you know crazy stuff so that's a little bit too complex for a quick tutorial so i will do it uh, with microtonic and you can follow along make sure that you open up microtonic multi because that lets you do a multi out in the regular microtonic there is only two outputs so you can select a or b but it doesn't give you the full capability that microtonic multi gives you so here we have microtonic multi first thing we want to do is we want to uh, name this our drum engine so we know where is the brain over here there is a little clickety thing the small arrows and you gotta have enabled all the missing chains. Now you can add them one by one or you can add everything. Now, if you're working with an instrument that has a lot of them, I suggest you will add just the chains that you need like one by one because otherwise it'll get messy really quickly <laughs> like you will have a lot. So over here we have all the outs so we can see that we send out all the instruments okay so that's already a good start next up we want to group it and we will name this rhythm tutorial now we will insert an instrument track and in this instrument track we will load up drum uh, machine from bitwig and we will double click I don't know, C1, for example, and hit OK. Without loading anything, we can just Control R to rename, and we will call this the bass drum, let's say. So, bass drum, and hit Enter, and there you have it. Now, every time I will open up MIDI, uh, you will see bass drum when you fold it uh, to be a drum editor. Cool, now we can deactivate it, but it will keep the naming which is good for us. So we want this to be named bass drum MIDI and we will duplicate that and name this, let's say the second channel. I always like to have the snares. Third, low percussions like toms and some rumble or whatever and then high percussions. Then I move over, I make the um, closed hats or the open hats i think i usually start with open hats close hats etc and then well, how much how many do we have we have two more okay so here it will be shaker symbol cool sim symbol that's not how you write a symbol and all of these we will add the notion that it is a midi 
channel. Now we want to receive all these. So we have a node receiver and we group that node receiver. We will take the bass drum MIDI and then we will, we will say, okay, this one is bass drum MIDI. Let's see that it works. Yeah. Cool. So this one sends out the notes, which is great. And um, now we want to move over and do the snare. So the snare MIDI will take the MIDI notes from the snare MIDI. The only problem with this is that if we were to rename this one as the snare, we will hit C1 exactly like the bass drum. Now I want to do that because then I can change uh, MIDI parts really easily. I can do a snare on the low perks and you know it's interchangeable because if I don't use the same notes every time I want to do the snare I will have to do a different note but I want to do C1 for all of these. So what will I do? Uh, the synthesizer receive C as channel one and C sharp as channel two or D flat, however you want to call that. So what do we want to do is we want to transpose that by a semitone. Okay. So we will do a semitone here for continuity sake. I will do a zero transposition here. Okay. Just to, to make sure that we are on the correct channel, because now I'm going to duplicate that and make the eight tracks needed. And then if I will go with the arrows down, I will want to see zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's for me, a verification method. So we will take the low perk MIDI here, I perk and so forth. I will do it quickly and you can follow along, but you don't have to. You can just skip ahead to the next part. Now I will want to do a semitone for each of these, because if you look, you have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp and G. OK, so that's a semitone every time. So we will do that. We can control click, by the way right in Bitwig and uh, we will rename these as it was written before. I wish I had a faster method for this but that's the fastest that I know of. Let me know if you know of any faster method. Okay. Okay now I finished writing it down. We finished getting all the MIDI in. Now what we want to do is we want to take the audio away from here. Basically in bit, we, we can use the mixer and open up everything and mix it from here. But I find it extremely tedious this way. So what I'm doing is I'm taking all the channels. I mute them from here. OK, so here on the side, you can do mute for everything and I will group so for example, the bass drum, I will call that the bass drum and I will add an audio receiver. OK, I will add an audio receiver to receive that channel. Off from the drum engine, so you got to select the pre. And, um, yeah, I can. I can also do like this snare. Basically the same naming okay? so we don't we don't get confused. The nice thing is you only need to do that one time. So now I can see we did not change the naming of the MIDI notes. Let's do that. Okay, now we will group each and every one of these MIDI channels. And the reason I'm doing it is twofold. One is it lets me have a channel that I can mix. And two, if you have a group and you press this, you're able to look at the MIDI in the group. So let's say I'm, I'm pressing all the folder. I have an overview of all the notes. I will finish up setting it and I will show you there is another neat trick that I found out about. Okay, so I want to do which one is it? The snare. We're going to name this the snare.
Now, what I really like um, is coloring all of my sections in the same way. So, bass drum will usually be red, snare is orange, open hi-hats um, is some sort of blue, closed hi-hats is light blue, shakers are usually purplish, and cymbals is light purplish or you know, some sort of different color from the shakers, but still light and in the blues. It just reminds me the spectrums. You can see that in record box and tractor that you have like red is the low frequencies and purple is the high frequency. That's usually my color coding and the entire thing usually is some sort of green. Well, let's differentiate between the drum engine and the rhythm. Okay. Now, uh, let, let us check if it's all correct. So I will move this, but if you mark an area and you click Control J, it just creates empty MIDI tracks for you, which is awesome in my opinion, but uh, I'm getting sidetracked here. So let's, uh, let's do a loop on all the channels. It is C1, right? So we can just do one, one time. Now we are able to move it around and see if it gets read by all the other tracks. And, and if we get in return the audio. So I will see that all the channels are like at about minus 18. And all the MIDI tracks, by the way, um, doesn't really important where their volume is, but I think it is important that it is different. If it is minus infinity, we know it's not an audio out. So what we're going to do is we will we will open everything up again. And we will go channel by channel with the same uh, MIDI and just check. You know that this one goes to the correct one. Cool. Cool. So now that we know that it is going to the same place that we want it to go, we can fold everything and we can make a pre-preparation. What do I mean by that? For example, if we're doing uh, four on the floor, it will be a kick every quarter, right? And we also know that the snare will be on the one and the four. Let's do a loop for the snare. When I write the notes, it gives me the option to jump to that channel. So if I have a, chan uh, a note here, and then I click on the loop icon, I can do, for example, 0.0, .0, 0, 0. So now I have uh, something pretty basic that I can just fire away when I have a track ready. I will save this uh, over here, save Ranger clip to library, and I will call it with um, tutorial. That's cool. Okay. Now I want to show you a little bit about Microtonic. You can use it as just a a drum machine that you send MIDI in for every sound, but you can also use the internal sequencer. And the really cool thing here is you can activate what they call the Patternarium, which is a system of online patterns. I do not know if it's still alive like it used to, to but you can get a lot of ideas and you can copy the presets to your microtonic. What's nice about this is once you get something that you like, you just click here on the copy and you just do a paste. And if you'll play this, you get the pattern with all the synthesized sounds. So that's Microtonic and that's my system of building up drum racks. Let's just check that it is 
working as expected. So I have the uh, clip here and if I drop it, let's see, it opens up everything. Yeah, I will upload it with this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, you can use this one to build any type of multi-instrument that you would like in Bitwig. Uh, I use it for multiple patches within one instance of contact, for example, or sign player or BSL or whatever orchestral libraries. It's really good for that. And um, well, this overview of all the notes here, it's crazy good. Uh, let me know what do you think of this method. Uh, will you use it? Will you try it? Of course, there is always room for improvement and I'll be happy to know if you improved on this or you have a similar method that you employ. If you survived this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please do listen to my music in uh, uh, Spotify and One Million Toys on Facebook. Uh, 1 million toys Instagram 1 million toys and on my website 1 million toys.com if you have something in tracks that interests you and you want to know how I did it you can ask as long as it's an answer that's shorter than 30 minutes I think I'll be able to answer so don't be shy ask me whatever you want and I hope that you see more of my videos soon so have a good time have a good day and I'll see you around uh, next time join me next time to whatever video I make next. <laughs> yeah, bye bye.